Hey guys, it's Glenn from glennscarcollection.com and you're about to see a vlog of what I do for, or what I did for a living. A lot of you email me, what do you do for a living to 48 cars, so I made this vlog about it. Uh, so this is what I did for a living, because if you've been following the channel, I got laid off about four months ago. And then the next email I get, most popular email, is what cars are in your car collection. So we'll do a vlog, what I did for a living, and then at the end of the vlog, I'll just do a quick uh, clip on all eight cars, so you see the ones that I own currently. Now on to the vlog. Hey guys, it's Glenn from glenscarcollection.com and as promised, I made a video of what I used to do for a living. So those of you that follow the channel know I was recently uh, laid off, but this is what I've done for the last 18 years. So as you know, I'm in real estate, I'm actually in commercial real estate, which is office buildings or warehouse buildings, not residential buildings. And what I do uh, in real estate is leasing. Now, what is leasing? Well, the best way to explain it, when you go to work in the morning, if you don't work from home, you probably go to your company and they're either in an office or a warehouse space. Now, some companies own their own building, but most don't. They just want the flexibility. They may have to leave and go to another town, or maybe they think they're gonna expand and outgrow their building. Uh, so what my company does is we own office and warehouse buildings. So I'm essentially an in-house real estate person for that developer, for that landlord. So if you told me, unlike a real estate agent, they could show you any house for sale, even if it's not their listing, I only could show you my listings, and my listings are all with the company I work for. So if we had 20 different office buildings, and let's say each office building had five available office spaces for rent, those are the only space I can, I can show you. So I deal with anything from small spaces to big spaces, but I've done deals with you know big companies, uh, big financial firms, pharmaceutical firms, uh, mainly higher end office buildings, A and B class buildings. And basically my job would be to find the tenant. So my uh, landlord, the company I work for, who's the landlord, would buy an office building or buy a warehouse building. We would try to retain the tenants that are there. My job would be is to renew their lease if they had a lease coming up in one year, two years, five years. We want to keep them there long term because obviously their rent pays for our mortgage on the building. And then we have expenses to run the building, of course, uh, anything from snow plowing to uh, building staff to paying the real estate taxes. And in a perfect world, the rent would cover that and then leftover would be profit for ourselves and our investors. Some buildings make money, some buildings don't. Some buildings only make money, think of it as a car. Some building, you could buy a car, needs a ton of maintenance, but maybe it's a collectible car, went up in value, you lost money on it until you sold it. <laughs> So you could do something like that would be uh, would be you know a typical investment. So a lot of times we buy a building that may be vacant. Maybe the other landlord didn't have the money to put in new air conditioning or upgrade the bathrooms or the lobby. So that building went to foreclosure or that landlord sells it cheap. We'll buy it, be funded, have a couple million dollars to put into that building to do all those necessary repairs. And then uh, my job would be to find the tenant. So my typical day would be, I would do showings, just like a, a residential real estate broker would show you houses available for sale or for rent. I would show people the office spaces we would have. So Smith Barney or IBM could call me and say, Glenn, what do you have? And I say, well, you need 20,000 square feet. I have it in this building or, or stuff like that. So how do you get your business? Leasing is a very required skill. It's like a sales position, but you're not buying and selling. So my job would be to find the tenant. So I may have to make phone calls. I, uh, you know, I have a book of real estate brokers. Like people say, well, why don't you work for CBRE or Cushman and Wakefield or Jones Lang LaSalle? They're actually commissioned salespeople. So they represent the tenant, take the tenants out to buildings to see where they can have their office or warehouse space. And a guy like me, actually my company would pay them a commission. So a real estate broker can represent your firm, find you an office space or renew you where you are, represent you to make sure you get a good deal renewing your lease. And they would actually get paid by the landlord, not by the tenant. So it's kind of an easy sell for a tenant to have a real estate broker because you're not paying them, the landlord is. Just like when you buy a house, typically you're not paying that agent, maybe you're paying them on a rental, but if you buy a house, the selling agent, the one, uh, the seller is actually paying that commission when the house is sold. So my job would be to find those tenants. So it's a lucrative job if you're successful at it, and I did it 18 years, so I was very successful doing it. Probably, I think, one of the, my best in the field. I was vice president, I did basically half the leasing for the company that I worked for. 
And I started as an associate and worked my way up, a mid-level guy, and then the last 12 years at this company, I came in as a vice president in my last job. And before that, I worked for a real big company, but I had to start on the bottom to get my foot in the door. So that's what I did. My job would be, my typical day would be, you know, showing office space, and then if they liked it, just like a residential realtor, you know, negotiate the terms, and then, uh, you know, there'd be a lease, you know, a 50-page lease that you have to negotiate what you can and can't do in that office or warehouse building, and legal rights and remedies and all that other stuff, which I did all that. And then, because I worked for a smaller company, I would also have to manage the asset, which is called asset management. I consider myself a, a leasing person, not an asset manager, but part of my job description would be to do the asset management also, which is the budget for the building, what are the real estate taxes gonna be, what it's gonna cost us for CAM, which is common area maintenance, uh, the expenses to run the building, and uh, you know make sure we had enough in the budget. And then here's income, I think, and these are the leasing assumptions. This is what I think I can bring in as far as leasing goes what rents the tenant will pay, how many square feet I'm gonna lease up. So this is gonna be our income for the building. And then this is gonna be our expenses. This is what we estimate, especially here in the Northeast, what it's gonna cost for snow plowing. That's one of your biggest uh, expenses is you have to plow the, the snow. You have to salt every single time it snows, every single time it's icy. And that's a number that you can't really predict. It depends how bad the winter is. Basically, leasing is a very specialized field. Very few people can do that because very few people have the contacts to lease up a building. So you have to have a lot of contacts with real estate brokers, tenants, and it's very different than uh, being a commission sales real estate broker for like a Cushman or CBRE. So I'm on the landlord side. I have a real estate license, but I only show buildings that the uh, that the landlord owns. So if you tell me you don't want to be at 123 Main Street, you want to be at 789 uh, River Street, I can't show you that building because I only am an in-house real estate agent for the developer, okay? But, you know, I did a lot of other things. I did asset management, so I'm the vice president of the company. I'm in charge of all the leasing, but then I'm in charge of the budget, the variance reports, all that other stuff. So we did asset management also. Asset management jobs typically don't pay as much as leasing jobs because leasing is a required skill. It's like the sales jobs, and the sales jobs typically pay the best. But the sales jobs are performance only. So if you don't perform, even though you get a salary, nobody's paying you that salary unless you perform. Uh, you know, what happened to me is I leased up all the buildings I had, so I basically leased myself out of a position. I had leased everything up long term. There was really nothing left for me to do leasing wise. And they're not gonna pay me to asset management because they can get an asset manager that just does the paperwork and the budgets for you know a lot less money. So they're not gonna pay a leasing guy if they don't have anything from the lease. So that's kind of how it came to be uh, unemployed. So most companies, you know, a big, huge real estate company like a REIT, a real estate investment trust, they might have, uh, you know, 20 leasing agents. A company like mine, there were two of us. And most companies only have one or two. A lot of times the president of the company, he could be the leasing guy. And then he's just got a junior guy to run around and do all the showing. So like a real estate agent would show a house, I would show an office building. So if I had 20 different office buildings and they each had five vacant spaces, those are 100 different spaces I would show. So one time somebody would call me and want to see space in South Jersey the next day, and I bumpy road here. I typically did what's called the tri-state area, which is New Jersey, New York, Connecticut. So I would do uh, New York City. I would do Greenwich, Connecticut. I would do South New Jersey and everywhere in between. So I'd go way out into Long Island. I'd go to by JFK Airport. I'd go to somewhere in Connecticut, I go you know, all the way down to South or Central Jersey. So that was pretty much my territory. Then we had buildings out of state, but the other leasing person basically did every st everything out of state. I did everything in driving distance. Why did I do everything in driving distance? Because I love cars. So I don't want to be on a plane going to all my showings, because uh, you're going to just fly coach, believe me. Uh, you know, I want to be able to drive a car for all the showings. So for me, it was great because I could always, you know, have a nice car. Most of my showings are between the hours of nine to five. So even if I'm in the office from eight to six or something like that, uh, usually my showings take place after the traffic already cleared so I can drive a nice car. Uh, you know, I basically went two hours in every direction from my office. So I can drive a nice car for an hour or two to the office building, do my showing just like a residential realtor would show a house, I would show the office space or the warehouse space, and then I'd go back to the office. So it was great. I can take a nice car. I could have, I drove so many miles that believe me, it worked 
having multiple cars, just split up the mileage, do, you know, 3,000 miles in every car times eight or something like that. So, uh, the problem is with leasing jobs is there's very few people that do this. So I, I have a feeling if I found a leasing job, I would get it since I have 18 years experience doing that and a, and a very successful track record. I've leased up buildings that nobody could lease and I've gotten them you know, to 100% or very close to that, which other people haven't. So people know me in the industry. The problem is you know, the typical company is mid-sized to small and they have one to two leasing people. And unless somebody leaves, like they didn't like the bonus they got or something, or for whatever reason, uh, there are no job openings. So in the four months that I've been looking, is I haven't found anybody looking for an in-house uh, you know, leasing vice president. And I would take a mid-level position or maybe even an associate position just to get my foot in with the company. It'd be a salary, which is better than nothing, and get my foot in the door. And I know once they see how experienced I am that I could work my way up if there was potential to move. But you know, I haven't found one position. It's all property management positions or asset manager positions, which are different than what I do. So a lot of people don't want to be in property management because that's tenant complaints where they call that uh, it's too hot, it's too cold. And so there's always property management jobs because people don't last that long in those jobs. They get stressed out. It's a 24 seven job. If, if uh, you know, a pipe bursts in the middle of the night or the guy didn't plow the parking lot, well, you got to go out there. So even if it's two in the morning or five in the morning. so. There's a high turnover rate for those jobs. So typically for property manager positions, which I'm really not qualified to do, uh, you know, there's a ton of those jobs, but there's no jobs, unfortunately, in the position that I do. So now you know that I do commercial real estate leasing. Hopefully something will break and I'll find something, but you know, I'm gonna keep trying. I'm gonna keep my head up. Thanks again for your positive comments, because your positive comments on these vlogs keep me going. because uh, a lot of times I if you know somebody gives me a call back or wants to meet with me, I get very excited. And uh, when I send out all these resumes and email all these people and I get no response, yeah, I'm the exact opposite. It's like, oh man, I can't believe it. How This is depressing. I can't, I'm gonna be unemployed forever. So your positive words of encouragement really, really help and I read all those positive comments. So thanks so much, guys. So enough about uh, what I did for a living. Browse the channel. We have reviews of over 370 different car videos. So if you haven't watched all 370, you need to do that. So binge watch when you get a chance. If you like what you see on this channel, hit the subscribe button. And remember to hit the notification bell. If you're already a subscriber, just hit the notification bell. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe and the notification bell. You'll get an email or a message every time. Uh, you get a notification every time I post a video. Typically, if you're not sure, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Even if it's a major holiday, I have a video set to go every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you don't get that notification, just check the channel every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Give this video a thumbs up. Share our car videos with your friends so our channel could grow and leave a positive comment below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.